Hey guys, this is Kaylin here. Today I want to share with you how to DIY this Serena Lily inspired pillow at a very affordable price. So I have this one which has this like vintage stripes. Um, it has like a nice linen-y texture even though it's made of cotton. And this one, which I love, um, I think the pattern is so pretty. And actually the two sides are different fabrics. So as I want to play around with styling, I can use this side or this side, it depends on my mood. And the other one, which I also love, um, which is more, I think the beachy California coastal style. Um, so this is like a, a blue, a light blue color. It has this like also linen texture. I believe it's also made of cotton. And then I add these like cute um, tassel details. I think it's really cute. I love the brand Serena Lily a lot. Their decors are so timeless and so chic, but their 20 by 20 standard pillows are usually above $100. So instead, I DIY this Serena and Lily inspired pillow using napkins, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I also added a tassel for the zipper to add some fun to it. So first, let's talk about sourcing the fabrics. Fabric is the sole of a throw pillow, and a lot of times I found it to be really pricey to buy those decor quality fabrics. So for this project, I used some napkins I found from Hobby Bar. They always have 20% off for sale. So say for this one, I actually spent less than $10 for two pieces of fabric, the front and back. I would encourage you to be creative at finding decor fabrics. I have a blog post sharing some tips on this and I'll link in the description below. For this project, I use a normal zipper, but I hid it with the fabric construction. And I will share another DIY pillow with invisible zippers so you can learn it both ways and decide which one is right for you. Okay, now let's dive into the DIY process. My first step is to remove the hem of the napkins this step is totally optional because you can always sew inside the hem and you have a finished edge inside the pillow. But for my case, the hem is quite wide, about 1 inch. So by removing the hem, I was able to create a 20 inch by 20 inch size pillow. If I don't remove them, the pillow would be 18 inch by 18 inch, which is also a decent size. I used a seam ripper to remove the hemline and it took me about 5 minutes to do it all. Just play some podcast or music while you do it. The next step is to install the zipper. So I place the two napkin fabrics on the table with the right side facing each other. Now with the hem opened, I can use a crease line as a sewing guide and it will give me exactly a 20 by 20 inch pillow. I pinned along the edge where I'll add the zipper. To add the zipper, I changed the stitch length to 4mm. This will create a basting stitch. Basting stitch is just a fancy term to describe a long running stitch which will temporarily hold fabric together and can be removed later easily. I just sew a straight line on the pinned edge with the basting stitch. For the beginning and end where the zipper doesn't cover, I change the sewing stitch to a normal length and stitch these two sections. And don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and end. After that, I place the zipper on top of the seam, with the zipper teeth facing down, and pinned it down so it won't move around. Then I brought it to my sewing machine and sewed along the zipper teeth. This will secure the zipper to the pillow and also serve as a top stitch. So you want the stitch to be pretty tidy.
I sew along the entire zipper teeth, creating a skinny long rectangle shape. When you pass by the zipper pole, just be careful and sew slowly. I use a hand wheel to help with that. And then I use a seam ripper to remove those basing stitches within the rectangle I sewed. Because the stitches were very long, it was really easy to remove them. Afterwards, I just opened and closed the zipper to test it out. Adding a zipper may not be the easiest way to make a pillow, but I promise it's going to pay off in the long run. It just makes changing the pillow so much easier and create a nice and professional finish. Now that the hardest part is done, the next step is to finish the pillow shape. I pinned along the remaining three sides and sew along using the crease line as a guide. I also backstitch around the four corners, but that is optional. To finish the raw seams, so the fabric won't fray when being washed, I use a tight zigzag stitch. So the stitch is wide, but close together. I zigzagged for both sides of the zipper seam and three other sides of the pillow. I applied the stitch about a quarter inch away from the seam line. Then I remove the actual fabric with a fabric scissor and just carefully cut along the outer edge of the zigzag stitches. So at this point, the basic construction is done. I turn the pillow cover right side out and add cushion insert to test it out. To add more interest to the pillow, I made a tassel using a silver embroidery floss I had around the house. I tied it around the zipper pole. I just like how it instantly adds a new texture to the throw pillow. I'll share how to make a tassel in my next DIY pillow video where I made the blue pillow with tassels using some different techniques. The video will come out next week, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this project and have learned some tips and making your own pillows. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Bye for now!